Hey everybody! Welcome to the Evening Reader. My name is Priscilla. Welcome back if you've been here before and just hello if you're new here. Thanks for being here. Uh, it's been a few weeks. I apologize. Uh, just work, life, yada yada. Um, I know you all know, I know that we are all busy humans, so, uh, but I appreciate your patience and I'm happy to be here. I am here today to do a tag video. I'm doing the Holmes is Where the Heart is tag. I was tagged by Angelia at Reads and Rereads to do this tag. And this was originally created by Mark at Book Time with Elvis for Holmes Month. It's an original tag and I will tag both, I will tag, I will include links to uh, Mark's original video and then also to Angelia's video in the description box below. Um, this is going to be a fun one. I have to say to start though, that I am not, I'm not as big of a mystery reader as I would like to be. I would really like to read more mysteries. Um, so it's gonna, this is going to be kind of a mixed bag of things, <laughs> but I tried to kind of stick with mysteries as much as I could just because it seemed like it was in the spirit of the tag. And I'm not a big Sherlock Holmes fan, uh, or I don't, that doesn't really sound right. I have limited experience with Arthur Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes. Um, I, I think I read some of the stories. I know I read Hound of the Baskervilles and probably several of the other stories, but a long time ago, maybe when I was in high school. And I remember also that a long time ago <laughs> when I was probably in my early teens, uh, there was on PBS, there was a show called Mystery that used to come on and they had a series of, uh, they ran a series of Sherlock Holmes mysteries as well that were a lot of fun, kind of similar to Masterpiece Theater, but they were all mysteries. And then, um, you know, of course I saw the BBC series with Benedict Cumberbatch and then also the movies, the Guy Ritchie movies with Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock Holmes and Jude Law as Watson. Um, those are a lot of fun. Uh, so, you know, I'm not completely out of the loop, but <laughs> these are all just about Sherlock Holmes, the, the prompts. Uh, so, but it's gonna be a fun, it'll be fun. So we'll have a good time. Anyway, anyway, let's get going. I'm gonna look at my screen to see the prompts. The first one is elementary, my dear Watson, share a classic mystery novel that you consider a must read. So I haven't read a lot of classic mysteries, and if I had to recommend one that was truly considered a classic, I would probably say Rebecca, although I myself have not read Rebecca since I was in my early teens. So, <laughs> but enough people are still recommending it and reading it that I feel safe in recommending that one. But I would like to recommend what I would consider a new classic, and that is the first book in the Dublin Murder Squad series by Tana French. And that is the book In the Woods that starts, that kind of kicks off that entire series. Calling it a series, it's not really a series the way we think about a series, but it's more um, a cast of different characters who all work for the Dublin Murder Squad. And the books in that group center on different people and they're sort of loosely connected sometimes and then they're sometimes closely connected. But the first book is about um, a detective named Rob Ryan and his partner Cassie Maddox and they are called to investigate a murder that has taken place um, in a location where um, many years earlier when Rob Ryan was a child uh, he and some friends were playing in the woods and they went into the woods and he was the only one who came out and he claims to have or does not have any memory of what happened there in the woods. And so it is about the investigation and also about what happened when Ryan was a boy and sort of how these things converge. Um, really, really terrific. Uh, just absolutely gripping. I got that. I I had gone on vacation. I uh, uh, had taken a book with me that I just wasn't really into. And so I decided for the flight home that I was going to buy a book. And that was the one that I picked. And I just, from immediately from the first page, I was just in that world. I, I don't know. I think maybe the plane could have been just bouncing all over the place. And there could have been 
<laughs> oxygen masks falling and I probably still would have just been like, just don't bother me. I'm, I'm trying to read. <laughs> so that started my, that was like in 2009, I think. And that started my whole obsession with Tana French. That was her first book. And of course, the second that her second book, The Likeness came out, which features the detective Cassie Maddox from In the Woods, um, she takes center stage. I was just, I was absolutely hooked and was a ton of French fan and I'm so excited for The Hunter. It's not long now, yay. Okay, anyway. All right, on with our prompts. The next one is Baker Street Irregulars. Recommend a book with a group of unlikely heroes or a diverse ensemble cast. And I think that my, I don't think this is an original answer. I think several people have given this answer, but I can't help it. And I'm just gonna say Lonesome Dove. Um, because what an amazing cast of characters McMurtry gives us in that novel um, from Gus and Call um, just across to July and Laurie and I mean, I, I don't know, I could go on and on, but that's just a such a spectacular cast of characters. And McMurtry is just, he so seamlessly moves from character to character in a way that's so organic. I, I'm just not sure how he did it, uh, but it's it's so wonderful. And of course, you, you all know, if you've been here before, that Lonesome Dove is one of my favorite books of all time. So, of course, that's going to be my answer. <laughs> uh, the next prompt is, the game is afoot. Name a book that had a plot twist or revelation that completely surprised you. Uh, I think I'm going to go with Gone Girl. I know that, you know, now in 2024, Gone Girl kind of feels like, eh, yesterday's news, but it was, it was really a shocker. It was really so well done. And I mean, of course, by, by naming a book that has a plot twist, I, I think everybody knows by now that Gone Girl has a big plot twist. <laughs> And I'm thinking right now about the annoying book tag uh, and the, the video that Melinda did on it, being annoyed by people who give away the plot or give away plot twists. But I think everybody knows about Gone Girl. And it's so funny that there's a prompt here about plot twists. Um, it was in 2012 when I read it. I had already read Gillian Flynn's first two books, Sharp Objects and Dark Places. And I just thought she was such a good writer. And when I read Gone Girl, I was blown away. I thought the twist was completely unexpected. I thought that it just worked really well. And I thought that they did a good job with the film. Um, although, you know, it was kind of, I was like, this was kind of tricky with the film because they, so many people had already read the book. Of course, it, you know, it suffered the fate that all popular books do of people who aren't going to read the book or then people who, you know, pull the sixth sense of, oh, I, I knew it from the beginning. <laughs> I already knew. <laughs> like, yeah, no, you probably didn't. I have to say that Flynn did a really good job of setting that whole thing up um, so that you didn't, you didn't know. And that when you found out what had happened and then the things that kept happening, it just, she just paced it very well and it was very well done. So. If you haven't read Gone Girl and you know that there's a twist, I would say still read it because it really is uh, just very well done, a very well crafted um, mystery. Uh, all right, second, uh, 221 Baker Street. Talk about the time you visited somewhere of literary significance. Uh, for this one, I guess I would say going to the Margaret Mitchell house in Atlanta. Uh, Margaret Mitchell wrote Gone with the Wind, uh, her, the house where she wrote Gone with the Wind that had the apartment where she wrote that uh, novel is just right there, I believe it, on, uh, at 10th Street and, oh, I can't remember if it's Peachtree or Juniper, um, it's just, it's just right there in Midtown Atlanta and it's a pretty cool place to see, uh, it's a, and it, you know, it gives you a bit of her history and kind of talks about, they talk about her life and they talk about her, you know, writing, um, uh, writing Gone with the Wind. And then of course about her very tragic and untimely death of being, being hit by a car. Uh, so no, not good. Um, but that was, that was interesting. The only other place that I've actually been to, but I wasn't there for literary reasons was Milledgeville, Georgia which was the home of Flannery O'Connor, 
and where she lived with her mother. And um, I, I, in a way, going to Milledgeville can sometimes, in some parts, feel like stepping back into the past. <laughs> but that's that's weirdly true of a lot of the South. It's sort of uh, both modern and, in some ways, it can feel like nothing has changed. Um, okay, next. Um, Moriarty's Master. Mo oh, Mori Moriarty's Master Plan. <laughs> I read so well. Uh, discuss a book where the antagonist was exceptionally cunning and memorable. And this one, I wanted to go with um, Sister Mary. I think her name is Sister Mary from um, Claire Keegan's Small Things Like These. Uh, Bill Furlong, you know, he delivers coal up at the, at the, uh, well, why can't I think it? I want to say the nunnery. I guess it is the nunnery, the nunnery in the school. And he discovers something there that's very disturbing. And when he tries to speak with Sister Mary about it, she, uh, well, let's just say that she just very coldly sort of owns the day. And and she's as that sort of representative of the larger idea of what was happening in Ireland at the time with the Magdalene Laundries. Um, and then just with the broader problems of the Catholic Church. Uh, and things that it keeps hidden. She, she's a formidable foe, and she's very powerful in the town where Bill Furlong lives. And she, she is an exceptionally uh, memorable character, even though she's only in the very small short novel for, you know, a very brief moment. But she creates quite the impact on both the reader and. Uh, I would say in some ways on Bill Furlong. So that's my answer for that one. The next one, The Art of Deduction. Mention either a book that kept you guessing all the way to the end or one where you guessed the outcome earlier on. All right, so <laughs> this is a hard one to talk about. I keep thinking about the annoying book tag, which I'm, I I also got tagged to do and I will be, I'm planning to do, but here we are talking about things like plot, plot twists and books that you figured out and those kind of thing. Uh, okay, well, anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with um, the book The Plot by Jean Homp Korolitz. Um, that's a really, really fun literary sort of mystery um, about a, a, a writer who uh, basically steals an idea for a novel from somebody who has died. He's kind of, he's been a one-hit wonder. He's having trouble getting getting it, another book written and really trying to get somewhere. And he goes to teach a course and he has a student who is surly and difficult, but who also has a brilliant plot for a novel. And the student dies, and this writer is left now with this idea in his hands, and he decides to take it and run with it. And so the book then is about what happens after he has written the book. And it has so many clever moments, a lot of sharp literary references that if you know the references, you can figure out, you can start to figure out or believe that you figured out who is the murderer and, and what is going to happen next. Um, but the book then does still keep you guessing because it drops other hints and you're not really sure. And so it is one of those where maybe you're going to pat yourself on the back if you caught the early clues and kind of figured it out. Um, but if you don't figure it out, well, it's still going to be an interesting revelation when everything comes out in the end. So that's a really fun book. Uh, something to have a good time with. Really well plotted, well written, well paced. Uh, um, I like, I really like Jean Hoff Korolitz. I've only read a couple of her books, but that I particularly liked. 
Okay, the second, no, the second, the next, <laughs> the next, the, uh, the Hound of the Baskervilles. Talk about a book with a strong atmospheric setting or one where the setting plays a significant role in the story. Okay, another Tana French Double Murder Squad book. <laughs> My favorite of hers is Broken Harbor. And this is set during the Great Recession in Ireland. We're getting a lot of uh, great books about the recession in Ireland, I think. I've got The Beasting here behind me that takes place during the recession. A fantastic book that I'll be talking about in a later video that I just read, um, The Rachel Incident by Carolina Donahue, also takes place during the recession in Ireland. Um, but Broken Harbor was probably one of the earliest novels because it came out, if you believe, in um, 2011 or 2012, and it is about the recession, and it takes place in a housing development, an unfinished housing development, um, when a, a detective goes to, from the Dublin Murder Squad, goes to investigate um, a murder, um, that a family that's been murdered, and they live in this housing development that was obviously, you know, built for like middle class families who were really had been taking advantage of the boom, but the development's not finished. And so there are a lot of half finished houses or houses that were never quite built out or that were abandoned by people who lost everything and had to move out. And it just is uh, the atmosphere that that creates and the whole, um, sort of hopelessness of the situation and then what happens in this book that is very much a sort of a psychological more along the lines of something like Shirley Jackson than a traditional murder mystery um highly highly recommend it very 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 good book my favorite like I said my favorite in the series um next the Reichenbach Falls talk about a series that you thought had ended but made a surprise comeback. Well, here I go again. I don't really read series, so I can't think of one that I've read everything in and I want it to make a surprise comeback other than the Dublin Murder Squad series. I'm really hoping that Tana French decides to write another one. Her last, um, is it her last three books? Yeah, she had The Witch Elm and then she had The Searcher and now she's going to have The Hunter and none of these are Dublin Murder Squad books, but I'm really hoping that she will write another one. I've talked about that before, and I'm sure she's probably sitting somewhere up in Dublin going, uh-uh, no, not gonna happen. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm gonna move on with my life. Stop putting me in a cage. So, but you know, we're gonna get her back in that cage. <laughs> Wait, that's that's not really a threat. I, it's, it's not a real threat, okay. Um, all right, uh, Sherlockian adaptations. Discuss your favorite book to screen adaptation or retelling of a classic story. Um, let's see, I what did I come up with there? Um, I would say in that one, I had to think about that. Uh, that you know, there's lot, there's lots of them, um, but I was trying to think of one where I had maybe read the book first uh, because. I would say like the original, is it the original? The original Death on the Nile from the late 70s with Peter Ustinov and Mia Farrow and, um, oh, is Maggie Smith in that? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, I thought that that was the first time I went to see Death on the Nile. We, we went to see that movie, but I obviously had not read the book yet. I think I read the book a few years later when I was 11 or 12. I read Agatha Christie really early. That was one of those books that <laughs> we had like all a book of her stories and and I was really into her. So uh, probably, yeah, I don't know if I was too young to be reading it, but I was reading them. So, uh, but then I thought, yeah, I'm looking at my pad because I've written things, some things down. Um, the Remains of the Day I think is probably one of my favorite book to screen adaptations that really keeps with the spirit of the book. But then to stay kind of in the mystery or kind of crime or what, you know, I don't know, it's, it's loosely connected. I would say Nicholas Pileggi's Wise Guy, which became the movie Goodfellas. Um, because Goodfellas is 
probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, and I enjoyed the book. I enjoyed the book, Wise Guy. I was really into mafia stories <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> I don't know. It was probably, probably something got into me because my parents took me as a baby to one of the Godfather movies. And, you know, I, I obviously didn't take that in and don't remember it. But it just lodged. Mafia stories are just like lodged in my brain. <laughs> So I always enjoy, I always enjoy a good mafia film, or especially if it's done by Scorsese. So uh, yeah, I guess that would be the answer for that one. And then the last one is recommend a book with a brilliant and memorable protagonist. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay, he's not a detective, but I'm going to go with um, a recent book um, because this protagonist has stayed in my mind. And I don't know that he's brilliant, but he is memorable. Um, and that is the book Stephen Florida by Gabe Habash. And the character, the main character, is Stephen Florida. And he is a young man who is getting ready to graduate from college. And he's a wrestler. And he is... Um, uh, it's his senior year and he is preparing for the a wrestling championship that's going to take place and he is absolutely obsessed with the idea of winning this championship but also it obsesses him because he has no idea what is going to happen next in his life where he's going to go what he's going to do with his life because everything in his life has been about getting to this point and winning this championship and he has a lot of things that in his past that he hasn't really dealt with that he needs to kind of work out and he's been sort of single-minded on this so that he can sort of push all that to the side and he is just the voice that Gabe Habash created and this character that he created and the way that this story is told about this year in this in Stephen Florida's life and it's just it's just remarkable really well done it's a debut novel uh again i highly recommend it it's one of the books that i probably would love to reread this year i've been wanting to reread it for years and i i keep not getting to it um but if you like really strong first person protagonists i highly recommend that one so that's it that's it that's the tag i have done it <laughs> I would love to hear um, any of your answers below uh, if you don't have a channel. And if you do have a channel and you have not done this tag, I would suggest doing it because it is it is a lot of fun. I was a little nervous at first because I was like, oh man, I don't really, I don't read mysteries and I'm not p participating in Holmes Month. And so I was sort of like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> but it worked out. It worked out. So thank you, Angelia, for tagging me. And thank you all for being here. And I will look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Okay, take care. Bye.